Hello and thank you for coming to check out this video. Today I'll be doing an extension of this playlist I have about how to read call manager traces where I'll be going from more simplistic call flows to more complex call flows and then eventually I'll start integrating other devices like in this video I'll be integrating a SIP gateway that goes out to the telco over PRIs and I'll take a little bit of, I'll take a little bit of a look at the debugs on that gateway in this video but I'll likely do a subsequent video where I look at the debugs in a little bit more in depth on the gateway. And then I'll likely do another video where I look at the debugs of the phone, which all of these different logs are actually included on a repository here, where if, when you're going through the video, if it's easier for you to learn by doing, you can go and download these logs yourself and apply whatever I did in the video the, the uh, logs that I'm looking at in the video are actually the same logs that are uploaded here. So let me see if I can find right here. This is, this is what I'll be looking at today over the SIP gateway. But I just wanted to make sure that people knew that the playlist is here and the logs are here as well for you to go through. And with all that out of the way, now let's go ahead and jump into looking at the logs. It's been a little while since I pulled these logs, so I don't really remember the call information. But within the uh, folder that you can download from the GitHub repository, there's a device and call information text file where we can see the call flow. Phone A is going to use SIP to call over to CUCM. CUCM is going to open up a SIP session with the voice gateway. And then on the voice gateway, there's some PRIs here that will do ISDN out to the telco. And on the telco side, we're not going to see any of this, but it'll go through the telco environment and engage phone B. And here's phone A's information. We have its IP address, its phone number. You can see what logs I had enabled on the log profile for the phone's configuration page. This is the dialed number. And I even documented what CUCM is going to send over to the voice gateway. And then you can see the voice gateway drops off the plus, And this is what's sent to the telco. Here we have the voice gateways information with the IP address. We even have some of the information about its hardware. And let me see, these are the debugs that are enabled and things like the server sequence numbers, service timestamps. These are all really good things that I got from a document that I'll pull up here on the screen. I highly recommend reading this document. It is amazing. I love it. It is, it was written a long time ago, but it still really carries a lot of value. And then down here we have our cluster information. So let's get that directory opened up again. And I'm going to look at the CUCM log, so I'll copy this out. And then from here we'll do Control Shift F. I'll plug that in here and we'll do DD equals to get the called number. I don't remember what it was, so we'll go pull it out of here. We'll do Control C to copy that. We'll paste it here. And this is where our digit analysis is. So I'll put DA short for digit analysis. I know that we've done a lot of this in previous videos, so I'm kind of going to move quickly through it. And then what we'll do is go down here to find the, the first CI. I'm turning off word wrap. And this is the line that we're looking for. So I'll turn word wrap back on to select it really quick. Actually, I'll do this. And then I'm just going to copy this out and plug it in. And we'll highlight the first CI just like we've done in all the other videos. And then what I'll do here is search on the first CI and scroll down until I find that second CI being associated with the first CI. And we'll note this up. And this is where things get a little bit the same, but a little bit different. I'll do a quick search on this, Control Shift F and search on it. We'll go down until we find that break in the sequence. And here's our SIP invite going out to the voice gateway. So I'll put that in here. Now that we're on this, we want to highlight the SIP call ID. And I'll use the second one on that. And then we'll do a Control Shift F and search for it. So we get the invite 100 trying. 
180, oh, 183 session progress. I wasn't expecting that, but that's okay. I was expecting a 180 ringing, but it's not really any problem. We get an incoming 200 okay, which is in response to our invite from earlier. And what we want to look at here, we can see for server, it lets us know it's coming in from a SIP gateway. Now, this is where I was talking about things can be a little bit different. First, I'll, I'll mark up this invite just so that we have it for later. And let me see what I marked up because I kind of felt like I already marked this up. Let me see. Looks like I messed it up. I'll take word wrap off so we can see a little bit better. Now, what we'll do is open up that file again, that, that directory again where the files are. And I have here the debugs for the gateway. Now, if we take this SIP call ID, and we go back to the SIP call flow right here. Here's a little trick. If you hit alt, you can type on the same line here. That SIP call ID we have is going to be sent from CUCM over to the voice gateway, and it's not going to change on the voice gateway side. And what that means is that we can take this SIP call ID, go over to the debugs from the, the gateway, put it in there and say, find next. So let me see if I can do find all. Hopefully I have the invite in here. I do. So as you can see here, the invite is being received. Let's go ahead and mark this up. Style token first. And the invite is received over here. And then the 100 trying is sent back. 183 session progress. 200 okay. Then the ACK is sent is received on the gateway from CUCM. The call's connected. RTP is going between the two. Eventually there's a buy. And we can see that it was sent from the gateway back to the CUCM, letting us know that phone B was the one that hung up. And then CUCM sends the gateway at 200 okay for that call being terminated. Now what we can do here is mark this up as an invite coming in from the gateway, coming in from CUCM and being received at the gateway. As you can see here, the gateway saying that it was received. Shortly after this, we should see some other stuff going on and you can see my other debugs that are enabled are actually starting to go through. I think these are from the Cappy debugs. And it's showing that the calling number is here. The called number is here as well. And then with these different debugs, we should start to see um, things like what's the inbound dial peer? What's the outbound dial peer? And... Um, we can then start getting into the ISDN Q931 debug output as well. All right, so now we see the 100 trying because it's, it's looking things up. You can see the destination pattern matching on this. So I think our, our dial peer should be here. Yep, our outgoing dial peer is here. Mark that up as second. And there should be somewhere else that we'll see the incoming dial peer. Let's just keep scrolling and see what we find. Right here is some of the ISDN Q931 debugs. You can see that we're transmitting a setup. So essentially we're sending a setup message to the telco. In SIP, we send invites. In ISDN, we send setups. And then here we're receiving a call proceeding. Right, so I'm starting to get a little bit more into some of the stuff that I'll do in a future video, but I just want to find out where that inbound uh, that inbound dial peer is being matched. Right here, incoming dial peer one. So it matches on dial peer one for the incoming leg, 
But as we saw for the outgoing leg, I think it was a different dial pier. Yeah, dial, dial pier 9 was what we matched on the outgoing leg. And if that's something that you want me to talk about more later, um, talking about incoming and outgoing dial pier matching and call routing in the iOS side of things, just let me know in the comments. And, and that's something that I can definitely put together. But for now, I think this was the extent of the video that I wanted to show is how you can take a call that went through the CUCM and match it to the gateway side of things. I do actually want to show one more thing though. If we go back to the traces and we find the other side of the SIP call, the side that was with the phone, right here, we have a 180 ringing being sent to the phone. We can highlight that as style token one and we'll copy this out. We'll do the same logic. This call ID, if we go back over here to the uh, phone side of things, and I'll do the alt. Here on the phone side of things, um, that SIP call ID is gonna be the same here, right? So what CUCM had for this leg, is also going to be on the phone side. Let's go ahead and open that directory again to open up the phones PRT and the logcat file here. That is the last hour of traces that the phone was writing. Our call should be in here then. So I'll do control F. So we'll do find next. And as you can see here, we do have our call. We'll do find all in Actually, I didn't want to do that. I'll do clear all, control F, and find all in current document. So this is our 200 OK. It looks like we're missing the invite, which is not that big of a deal. But let's go ahead and take a look at the other logs here. I think in main image, main, main here. This is all of the old archived files here. I'll copy out this directory path and we'll take a look for this SIP call ID again. Doing control shift, control shift F, plugging in that new directory. We have our SIP call ID already in there. And let's see if we can find the file that has the invite as well. So right here, you can see that the phone sent the invite and it's in messages zero under the uh, log save main and then this particular date and time directory. So it does look like maybe some time did transpire between when I pulled the PRT and when I made the call. Now, just like we did in the other videos, we can uh, just, you know, do invite. And then here should be a 100 trying. Now we're looking at the other side of the call here now. So this is between CUCM and the phone. Here we can see that the phone received at the 100 trying. So that means that CUCM sent the 100 trying to the phone and we received it. Then we get the 180 ringing, which is, uh, looks like CUCM received the 183 session progress and turned it into a 180 ringing instead. And then 200. Okay. That's where the call is connected. Now we just walk the line here and follow the same sort of things that we did in all the other videos, just going through and following the call through the logs and just annotating everything. Again, if you want me to do more analysis of phone logs, if you want me to do more analysis of the gateway debugs, um, if you want me to do a video about how can you tell which button is pressed on the phone just by looking at the logs, right? Because the user might say, oh, I didn't press that button, or they might tell you, I pressed this sequence of buttons. Well, let's go to the logs and confirm that what you're saying is true. I can do a video about that as well. Maybe toss in some Jabber stuff. I know people in the past that asked for that. But that does it for this video. And the other video about analyzing the debugs a little more on the gateway, that one will be coming up probably in my next video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.